what you know about that. Okay. So is the screen visible? Please confirm. Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay, thank you. Now, in foundation engineering, our main focus will be to enable the students to estimate the bearing capacity of soils, how we can determine the bearing capacity of the soils, which is important for the foundation design. We will determine the size of the foundations and we will discuss that what are shallow foundations and what are deep foundations in our introductory lecture. So these are the course outlines only. Then going into the CLOs, there are three CLOs, CLO 1, 2, and 3. In CLO 1, it's basically the definitive stuff explain the foundation types and selection, foundation loads, bearing capacity, different bearing capacity equations, soil failure modes, and foundation settlement, field tests, and soil improvement techniques will be discussed here. Now, the theory which we learn in the CLO1, when we apply that theory to find out the bearing capacity equations, field test data settlement formulae to estimate load capacity of the shallow and deep foundations will be part of the CLO2. After that, if we evaluate the different types of foundation systems according to the field conditions, stability of the retaining walls in terms of the translational, rotational and bearing capacity failures will be the part of CLO3. Activities will be quizzes, classroom discussions, in-class activities solving different numericals, examples and problems. Homework assignments will be given, group assignments or projects may be given, presentation by students, uh, it's kind of an intensive uh, course there, so we will see that if we can give presentation in this course, I think so it's good for the Geotech 1 and Geotech 2, but here we will be having, may or may not be, we will go for the presentation in this course, reports maybe um, it's not possible here self-study yes it's uh, highly recommended uh, any other suitable mean midterm major examination will be connect, uh, conducted and final term examination one extra thing which is included in this foundation engineering course is the complex engineering problem so in complex engineering problem usually we give student students the a, a complex engineering problem related to the foundation design where you can use manual calculations or maybe a software to find out the bearing capacities and the dimensions in the first week today we are going to introduce the course definitions purpose and types of foundations general requirements of the foundations steps which are required in the foundation design, selection of the foundation type and loads on the foundation will be discussed in today's lecture. In the second one, we will discuss the types of bearing capacities, soil response to a loaded footing methods of obtaining bearing capacities and collapse load using the limit equilibrium method. After that, we will move towards very important lectures related to the shallow foundations. And we will discuss Tirzaghi's bearing capacity theory. We will solve examples on it. And we will understand and we will discuss the effect of water table related to the water table effect. We will solve a few examples as well. Then we will move towards another important lecture, which is Meerhof's theory of bearing capacity, effect of load 
eccentricity on the bearing capacity in climbed loads and we will also solve examples related to the Meerhof's theory of bearing capacity. Different foundation design philosophies, for example, allowable stress design, limit state design, and examples will be solved in the fifth week of this course. Introduction, components of the settlement, and the concepts which we learned in Geotech 2. Here in Tezaghi's Meerhof bearing capacity, the concepts which we learned in the Geotech 2 related to the shear strength parameters will be discussed and will be applied here in these theories. Now, when we want to find out the settlement of the foundations, so the settlement concepts which we discussed and we learned in the Geotech 2 will be applied in this lecture. Then in Geotech 2, we discussed a little bit about the standard penetration test and how it is performed in Geotech 2 lab. We performed the demonstration or we saw the demonstration of the standard penetration test, plate load test. Now, particularly how we can find out the allowable bearing capacity from these field tests will be discussed in this course. We'll solve examples on it, then we will move towards the metrum primary consolidation settlement and the examples time rate of settlement will be discussed after the midterm in 10th and 11th week types of retaining walls modes of failure stability and the drainage issues will be discussed in the 12th and the 13th week then we will move towards a very important chapter which will be chapter number four and that will be on the deep foundations and in deep foundations our main focus will be on the pile foundation now we will discuss the different methods of construction for the pile foundations methods of the load capacity of the piles driven piles different types of hammers which are used to install the pile foundations static capacity of the single board or driven piles, what is negative skin fraction, what is pile load test and how these concepts can be used in practically designing of a pile foundation. So for that, we will solve a few examples as well. Now, efficiency of the pile groups in cohesive and cohesionless soils will be discussed, group capacity, settlement of those pile groups will be discussed i don't think so that we are going to focus on the um, this uh, compaction because if you remember we focused on this topic there in the compaction chapter which was related to the compaction and we had a very excellent animations and presentations uh, we had on the compaction different compaction methods like for example vibro compaction vibro replacement dynamic compaction using different types of additives which are used to enhance the properties of the soil so you will see you know i think it's quite intensive course so uh, this one is already discussed but let's see the, how the things will go in the 17th week then we will move towards the final term exam the varying policy is as per the department that how you will get the a and negative b c or d grades i hope no one gets the f there now recommended books these course outlines are already shared with you using the google classroom so you can download that if you want uh, soil Mechanics, RF, Greg, Soil Mechanics and Foundations by Buddhu and Foundation Analysis and Design by Joseph Bowles will be our textbooks here are the course books which we will refer in this course. Lots of resources on internet are available. You can uh, watch those videos you can download the literature so it's highly recommended uh, for the far shallow and deep foundations 
So that is the course outline. Now we will move towards the introduction chapter, which is chapter number one. And in chapter number one, we will set a tone for this course. So before going into the text there, please kindly note down here that for example, we are given with this frame structure. So this is the frame structure. This one. So here is the frame structure. This one. And if the load needs to be transferred to the soil, and if we want to transfer 40 tons of the load in that central column, how we can safely transfer that load to the soil, which is present here. This is so. so let you know that this is just an introduction and we will go in the details of each and every terms which is used in this lecture so the middle column is one feet into one feet and that load is 40 tons. Now the ultimate pressure that will cause the shear failure is 10 ton per square feet. Now if we take the factor of safety equal to 4, the allowable pressure intensity will be 2.5 ton per square feet. So Q allowable is equal to 2.5 ton per square feet. However, Q ultimate is equal to 10 ton per square feet. This is one criteria which we need to satisfy for the foundation design, which is the shear failure criteria. Okay, this is criteria number one. Please confirm that you can hear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. OK, thank you. However, the allowable pressure intensity to limit the foundation settlement, which we discussed in Geotech 2, which is equal to 25 millimeter, Okay, this is the allowable pressure intensity to limit the foundation settlement to 25 millimeter. And for this, that allowable pressure intensity is 1.8 ton per square feet. So this will be the criteria number two. And this one is the settlement criteria. The first one is the shear failure criteria. And we will discuss about the factor of safety in the lower part of this slide. Now the bearing area of the column is one square feet. Now if you want to transfer this load into the stress, 
This will be 40 ton per square feet. And you can clearly see that 40 is huge than both the criteria of the settlement and also the shear failure criteria. Now, how we are going to tackle this problem, one way is to, for example, increase the width of this column all the way down till here. And then we can, this will be option number one. The another option will be to increase a portion or to add a portion here beneath the column to transfer that 40 tons of load to be transferred to the soil, which is present here. So this is the option number two. So which options, which option we are gonna choose or which option we are gonna pick or what, which one you think that is a better option? Any option, thoughts? Number two. option number two. Now the question raises here in our mind that why we are going to choose the option number two? Because it is economical, sir. Because it is economical. Excellent. Now, the engineer is a person who saves time and who saves money. So we will go for the option number two, but now we need to again check the shear filler criteria and the settlement criteria. So for example, we pick the option number two and we provided a foundation which is having an area of 25 feet. Now, if you want to find out the pressure intensity here, that pressure intensity will be 1.6 ton per square feet. Now, if we see here, the shear failure criteria says that it can take up to 2.5 ton per square feet. Now, with the option number two, design of the foundation that is less than this one 2.5 tons per square feet so we are okay with the shear failure criteria now for the case of this one the settlement criteria so we can clearly see that with this modified foundation this one is 1.6 is less than 1.8 ton per square feet. It means that this foundation is going to satisfy the shear failure criteria as well and the settlement foundation settlement criteria as well. Now, if you want to calculate the factor of safety and the factor of safety in this case will be 6.25, which is quite good for the foundation which we have designed right now. Now we can clearly see that the settlement criteria is the governing criteria. What is the governing criteria? So you can clearly see here that in the shear failure criteria and the settlement criteria, the lowest value is 1.8, which is related to the settlement criteria. So therefore, this one, which is the settlement, so this criteria is the governing criteria or in other means, and or another way we can say that we need to look into that limit, 
because that limit will cause 25 millimeter of settlement. Now, how to calculate the ultimate bearing capacity, uh, which will cause the shear failure of the soil will be discussed in chapter number two, which is related to the shallow foundation. In chapter number four, we are going to discuss the deep foundations and how to estimate the foundation settlement will be covered in chapter number three. And for chapter number four, that will be also discussed on the settlement of the deep foundations. Now, the factor of safety. Why we go for the factor of safety? I need a short discussion here. For safety purpose. Why we take factor of safety in the foundation design? For safety, sir. Okay. But why? Why we can, uh, why we take two, why we take three, why we take four, why we take six? What is uh, sir, if, sir, if one we one. done uh, some error, uh, so it can accumulate in the factor of safety. Okay, excellent point. Can you please repeat that? Uh, because it's a very excellent sentence. Sir, if we uh, have done some errors in our calculations or design, so it can accumulate in uh, that factor of safety. Excellent, Ibra. If we have made some error in the calculation or in the design, then we take the factor of safety. What are the possible areas where we can make error? In the foundation design that would be the next question in our mind what are those errors which we can make as a geotechnical engineer so maybe we have found uh, the bearing capacity of soil incorrectly also maybe, maybe we excellent excellent okay now Ozer is saying that maybe we have made bearing capacity calculations incorrectly for some reasons. Now, what are those reasons? Incorrect estimate of the loads. Uh, maybe, that we can... have, uh, sir, maybe we have a limit of uh, instrument in the lab, uh, or we, maybe we have performed uh, not according to the STM, uh, the method of determining the bearing capacity. Excellent. Now, uh, maybe uh, a sampling handling, a simple handling. Excellent. Sampling hardening can be an issue as well. The sample disturbance can be issues as well. The apparatus can be issue as well. Estimation of loads can be issues as well. So in order to account for those all uncertainties or as Ibrar said, those errors which we can make, uh, now we will go for the factor of safety and then we will apply that factor of safety in our foundation design. Excuse me. So there is natural variation in the soil properties. Sampling and testing techniques are not perfect. So we can say that, I don't know if we have find out the shear strength parameters using the direct shear test or we have, um, for example, I usually give the example of a building which is constructed in Abdabad now how the sampling was done whether it was using the split spoon sampler whether they used the shell by tubes there and who collected those samples we don't know a the another thing is that how the soil samples were transported here and then who performed the test and on what apparatus the test was performed because we are getting the C, which is cohesion and friction angle. So these are the errors which we can make and the theory is to find the bearing capacities. And if you remember with the consolidation Trizaghi's theory, we made lots of assumptions there. 
Now we are going to make a few assumptions here as well in finding the bearing capacity for that particular soil. So the assumptions may not be the true assumptions or maybe it can lead to different bearing capacity. So in order to account for that, we apply factor of safety. Now someone mentioned about the foundation failure are difficult and expensive to repair. So if we are making few errors here, so we don't want to go for the extra cost of the repair, retrofitting and all these kind of structural damages can cost a huge amount of money because it's very difficult to earn money. Okay, now for the foundation, we have a superstructure here and we have a foundation which is constructed into the soil. So to transfer the load here, now that would be the pressure which will be applied from the bottom of the foundations. And similarly, we can also construct a foundation. We need this column as well and we need this column as well to transfer the load from the superstructure. Now, who is a foundation engineer and how we can prepare a foundation engineer if a student gets some training, gets some experience and know few scientific principles. Now, what are those scientific principles? He should know about the phase relationships. He should know about the origin of the soil. He should know about the compaction characteristic. He should know about the consistency limits. He should know about the consolidation, the shear strength of the soil, and uh, the foundation designing Terzaghi's bearing capacity equations. And he should know about the Meerhof's bearing capacity equations, how we can use the different uh, bearing capacity factors and the shape factors, inclination factors, all these principles a student must know. And at the end, he should apply the engineering judgment as well, which will come by training and the experience. Now, how he can develop the scientific principles? Now, formal education courses can be taken on the soil mechanics, geology, foundation engineering, structural engineering, and you can also continue with the self-study or professional conferences, journals, and all these kind of academic activities. So this will ultimately make him a good foundation engineer. Now, the next question which comes into our mind will be that what are the different types of foundations? Now, there are two types of foundations. One is shallow foundation. The other one is deep foundations. Now, the next question in our mind will be, what are the shallow foundations? So this is the surface of the soil. And if we are constructing a foundation here, This is the depth of the foundation. And this is the width of the foundation. For example, this is DF. And this is the B here. So for example, if D by B is less than or equal to one R, one to three, in some cases, I'll say this one is here. These are known as shallow foundations. Okay, so this one is the shallow I 
have a pen here, but I don't know why it's not working. So I'm gonna... shallow foundations. Okay. Now, if we are having a ground surface here, and if you are constructing a foundation here. So this would be the B here, and this one is the depth of the foundation or the length of the foundation. We can also say length of the foundation, or we can say that as the depth of the foundation. So if the DF by the width of the foundation is greater than or equal to four, this will be known as deep foundation. Okay. And that's what is written here as well. If you want to note down, there are different types of shallow foundations and there are different types of deep foundations as well, which will be discussed in very good detail in chapter number four. Now, in case of shallow foundations, the first type is spread, single or isolated footing. This is very common foundation type and uh, many constructor and the construction company, they uh, prefer to construct these types of foundations that you might have seen these types of foundations uh, practically as well. So the plan view and the side views are also given here. You can see here that sometimes you will get steps in the foundation. Sometimes it will be a slopey, it's just for saving the concrete in the structure. These are economical foundations. That's why construction companies are, if you give them a task to construct a house for you guys, so all the constructor, they prefer these kind of foundations unless and until uh, there are not different, you know, load combinations and different issues which will be discussed in the combined loading. A strip footing is a simple wall footing. So if you provide concrete uh, beneath the wall a little bit, you know, wider area, or if you just spread the uh, bricks beneath the wall a bit wider, which you have seen in the houses, just to provide, uh, you know, a bit wider area, this will be related to the strip or the wall footing. Now, in case of combined footing, we have different options. One is the rectangular option. The other one is the trapezoidal option. And the third one is the strap option here. Now, why we go for the combined footing, sometimes we will see unequal column loads. So, so that is one option. And sometimes we need to place uh, a machinery here, for example, in here, a machine should be present here in this particular lab or in the building. So we don't need uh, this column here. Now, this will create kind of, you know, uh, eccentricity as well. And the load distribution here and here, it will be different. Now, in that case, uh, it's better to provide uh, the combined footing. Now, also, if you are on the property line, for example, here in this case, so we don't want to cross the property line and non-uniform distribution of the pressures. So we need to combine these two columns load so that it can be equally transferred to the soil. So in case of eccentricity, the movements which will be created, which can 
disturb the soil which can create non uniform pressure distribution beneath the uh, foundation soil so that we go for the combined footing option now in another case sometimes the p1 is greater than p2 and we are at the property line we cannot cross this line here and the load here is greater on the left side so sometimes in order to distribute the pressures uniformly so what we are going to do we will thicken the area or widen the area for the p2 load this one is the p1 sorry p1 load and this is the p2 so once we do that we will get a uniform distribution beneath the foundation now in some cases if you see here this is the rectangular footing which is provided so you can clearly see here if we provide a strap in between example like this okay we can this is this strap here it's kind of a beam you can call it which is provided here so you can save this much of concrete if we provide a strap in between those two column loads now this should be provided not in a very very weak soils are uh, having very low bearing capacity soils so if the soil conditions are relatively good so you can connect these two foundations in order to have the uniform distribution beneath the foundations then here it's shown that different types of loads are applied onto the column and then the loads are transferred to the soil here this is the soil and these loads if they are eccentric they will create movements here as well and the resultant is acting and how you can calculate the uh, centroidal distance and the length by the length of the foundation is here so how you can find out the mid length of the foundation is given here actually it is very difficult for the construction companies to construct these types of foundations these one they usually go for the first option because it's very easy the formwork is very cheap uh, so they prefer these kind of uh, foundations more compared to these two options because it will be very very costly now this is a conventional method in which a procedure has been shown and discussed that how structural engineer approach the design of the foundation and let me tell you as a geotechnical engineer they are interested in only one value and this is the value because this is the compressive strength of the concrete this is the yield strength of the uh, reinforcement they do the necessary calculations for the dead load they do the calculations for the live load they calculate the moments created due to the dead loads for the live loads and then they calculate the load onto the foundations the ultimate load and the ultimate moments so this is one value okay please confirm that you can hear me yes sir, yes, sir. thank you okay because we are going into a very good discussion here 
you studied geotech 1 you studied geotech 2 now structural engineer once you study foundation engineering you will come up with this value so you are able to achieve the allowable bearing capacity value and that what the structural engineer is interested in so let me just briefly go that how we approach this so we are given with the bearing capacity theories which we are going to start in the next lecture bearing capacity theories okay can't go beyond that so you can write theories okay now bearing capacity theories are dependent upon the shear strength parameters you can write here the shear strength shear strength parameters and now those shear strength parameters are depending upon the shear strength for example lab test i would call it now we don't know or maybe lab test now field test it's possible to get the shear strength parameters from the field as well then uh, basic classification i would call it basic classification of soils basic classification of soils mm, or we can say basic geotechnical characterization properties so you can clearly see that information or the knowledge of the geotech one i would call it geotech one and then the geotech two and then the foundation engineering and then you give them one value so that one value is important and i hope that you already know the uncertainties which are involved in getting that one value as a broad mentioned so that's why the structural engineers apply the factor of safety for the errors which we can make or we have made there that will give us the ultimate bearing capacity and then once we get the ultimate bearing capacity we can find out the resultant of the forces which are acting for example the p1 or the p2 here then once we get the resultant we can find out the centroidal distance which is pretty simple just take the moments at one column equal to 0 so you will get the centroidal distance or the point of application of that resultant load once you do that you will find out the dimensions which is the length and the width now if you want to find out the ultimate load which is applied onto this so you can simply write that q ultimate is equal to p ultimate divided by the area so if you want to find out the p ultimate so you can bring this here basically the conventional designs are not part of this course i guess but the an idea is given here to let you know that how structural engineer uses the value which we are going to give them in the coming lectures now you can clearly see that this one value is very very important in deciding the length and the width the length and the width of the foundation and that length and width of the foundation is related to 
You need to complete that sentence for me, please. The length and the width of the foundation is related to, please complete that sentence. Foundation. How many students are here approximately? Say one word, please. Force applied on the foundation. Force applied. Foundation, foundation design. design. One sentence. Design? Only one word. Good. That obviously that is related to foundation design. One word. Try till I hear that word, please. Till our day foundation. Arif, what's that? Hello, our day foundation, sir. I bearing capacity, sir. Bearing capacity. Please keep saying that word so that I can hear that word. We started with the bearing capacity. Let us remove that. Q allowable, that is the allowable bearing capacity. And then we are coming with the foundation sizes there. And those foundation sizes are related to, now we got the foundation sizes. This is related to the cost of the project. Okay. It is now to the builder, he's gonna, the structural engineer has given the length of the foundation and the width of the foundation. Now it is directly related to the cost of the project. So can you see here what I'm trying to convey that as a geotechnical engineer, you can clearly see that how we reached to this value and if this one value is wrong or incorrectly given to a structural engineer then how it can affect the overall cost of that project now what is currently going here in pakistan that we don't focus on the geotechnical engineering properties of the soil. For example, we don't know how the test was performed, who collected the specimen, but they will give you a Q allowable using the standard penetration test. And a structural engineer is interested in this value, and then he will give Its value into the calculation and he will give the length and breadth to someone to construct a house or a plaza and he will get a salary and now who is going to bear the cost the client is going to bear the cost and the client is paying too much money, maybe or may not be because if that factor of safety is applied. Anyways, here the variations of the dead load and variations of the live load are discussed, are added based upon the design. It's just an overview just to refresh your mind that how the designing is done practically in the field and what are the shortcomings which a geotechnical engineer can tackle and how many opportunities I would call that is there as a geotechnical engineer because we are only using direct shear test. Let's go here. This is a very good slide, I guess. Now, and let me do that a little bit, zoom out as well. So this is an excellent um, slide here. So you can clearly see that from the direct shear test, if we are 
giving the Q allowable, or if you are giving from, for example, the SPT test, we are giving the Q allowable to a structural engineer, how that can affect the dimensions of that structure. And ultimately it's gonna cost a lot of money to the client. So think about it and see that how many areas are available for a geotechnical engineer to address to get this QLable. And this will be the focus of our uh, discussion in the chapter number two in the shallow foundations. We will discuss those Terzaghi's mirror bearing capacity equations. So we will do our best to apply the knowledge of the shear strength parameters in this in these theories. We will do some discussion there, hopefully in the next week. Now, here is another type of foundation. This one, mat foundation. Now, if for example, if we are constructing a Centaurus mall, hyper mall, or a multi-story building, and we are providing too many columns here, for example, one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 15, and 20. So 20 columns are there. And if the footing area is covering, for example, 50% area total area, if that 50% is covered, then it's better to provide a mat or raft foundations. For example, you can place that reinforced concrete all the way from the length and breadth, I would call it, for example, here, this is the length of the foundation. It doesn't matter, but for example, if it's a square one, so length. So you will provide five by five or 20 by 20, I would call it, or 50 by 50 feet raft beneath the foundation. And then you can place the uh, columns. So this one will act as a single raft or a mat foundations. Now there are different types of um, mat foundations which you can construct. For example, the uh, flat plate, the flat, plate thickened under the columns here, and also the waffle slab, flat with pedestals, and basement walls can also be part of the mat. So these are different scenarios which we can uh, go for in the foundation designs. Sometimes uh, it's very difficult and it's uneconomical to provide the raft beneath the foundation because it requires uh, lots of positive and negative reinforcement. So these are the negative reinforcement which you need to provide for uh, countering the movements which are created in the mat foundations. Uh, so people avoid these using the fiber spacer boards here, even though if it's a very, very large foundation beneath that column, but they provide a few, some spacer here just to avoid those negative reinforcement. Again, reinforcement cost money. And that money you need to save as a geotechnical engineer. If you are not saving money, if you are not saving ge uh, the um, time there, so you need to work on the training experience and scientific principles and the engineering judgment here which we discussed so here if you are not saving the time if you are not saving the money then we need to work on the training experience and scientific principles and the engineering judgment and here you can do how we can increase those skills to our knowledge okay anyways now that was the mat foundation mm -hmm. about the 
यस प्लीज सर ये स्पेसिंग क्यों इस वजह से प्रोवाइड करते हैं कि हमारे पास इकॉनमी सेव हो जाए तो सर इसकी रीजन समझ नहीं है कि किस तरह मतलब इकॉनमी सेव होती है ओके दैट्स अ वेरी गुड पॉइंट द नेगेटिव रीएनफोर्समेंट द मूवमेंट्स इफ यू प्रोवाइड अ राफ्ट फाउंडेशन देन यू नीड टू प्रोवाइड द नेगेटिव रीएनफोर्समेंट now if you are going for the spread or isolated footing now in that case you don't need to provide the negative reinforcement understand now if you are going for chale main bol do bata deta hu agar koi nahi dekhiye aapne negative reinforcement provide karni hai agar usme movements generate hote hain agar aapke paas mat foundation hoti hai agar aap usko isolated footing ki form mein leke aate hain iske darmiyan spacer board lagate hain to phir compressive jo positive reinforcement hai वो आप उसके अंदर लगा सकते हैं लेकिन नेगेटिव रि की आपको जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी अगर नेगेटिव रि की आपको जरूरत नहीं पड़ती है तो आप क्या कर सकते हैं आप जो है ना एक्स्ट्रा मनी जो है ना वो सेव करते हैं वो नेगेटिव रि मूवमेंट को टैकल करने के लिए ऊपर लगाए जाते हैं वो आर में आप जो है ना वो डिटेल में पड़ेंगे देखिए वो हमारा फोकस है भी नहीं और ना होना भी चाहिए मैंने आपको बताया कि हमारा जो क्यू एलाइबल है वो मेन फोकस है कि क्यू एलाइबल को किस तरीके से फाइंड किया जा सकते हैं और उसको किस तरीके से आ सकते हैं तो पॉजिटिव नेगेटिव इन्फोर्समेंट अपने के कोर्स अगर लिया हुआ है तो मेरे ख्याल में किसी को अगर ज्यादा डिटेल में पता है तो सिटी में आप उसको पढ़ भी सकते हैं ठीक है तो ये मूवमेंट्स को जो है ना रेजिस्ट करने के लिए या मूवमेंट्स को टैकल करने के लिए जो है ना दी जाती है प्रोवाइड की जाती है मैट फाउंडेशन सही है बेसिकली फॉर द टाइम बींग यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट दीज फाइबर बोर्ड विल Uh, save the money on providing the negative reinforcement for the time being okay phir hamare paas yahan pe depth ki requirement aati hai theek hai depth ki requirement deep foundation sorry now we already know that if the if the depth of the foundation or the length of the foundation is greater than or equal to 4 that will be known as the deep foundation here now there are different requirement requirements for the foundation system for example the safety requirement the depth requirement spacing requirement economic and functional requirement so these are the different types of requirements for a foundation for example the safety requirement for the safety requirement we discussed in our earlier part of this lecture that there are factor of safeties which are applied due to the unforeseen uh, issues sampling uh, soil variation dead load live load variations and these issues are making us to assume the factor of safety of the soil then settlement can occur and we should design a foundation that it should not settle too much differentially or in the total settlement which will cause damage to the structure overall structural failure should be avoided and the the foundations should be safe enough to avoid the structural failures then the depth requirements let's have a discussion here the depth requirements for the northern areas and the depth requirements for the central punjab and the depth requirements for the balochistan so do you think the depth requirements should remain the same for example if i say 1 feet or 2 feet what could be the possible reasons नॉर्थन एरिया में सर कम होगी सर क्योंकि वहाँ पर रोकी सोइल है और जो मतलब प्लेन एरिया है वहाँ पर ज्यादा होगी how about the weather
how about the weather conditions think about the yes, weather sir. conditions as well sir agar rain zyada ho to matlab jin ilakon mein rain zyada hota hai to usme depth zyada hame chahiye so what issues can occur why we are sir, going sir. for the option settlement sir phir hogi so we can experience settlement nice point but if rain occurs what can be a potential hazard there sir water table rise hogi water table will raise if the water table raises what are the issues to the foundations sir phir hame depth zyada karna padega we need to go for a head deeper depth so that you know the moisture fluctuation will not affect the foundation because if that is uh, affected it will create significant settlement issues as a brass said good so all these points are adding up to the depth requirement so we need to provide a certain depth so that we can avoid the seasonal freezing and thawing freezing is known as just for the northern areas i would say thawing is known as heating up of the soil now the moisture fluctuation as we discussed should be avoided and that's why certain depth requirements are provided in the codes here we need to provide water uh, we need to provide a depth to the foundation to avoid the erosion and we need to go for the water or even the wind erosion as well bypass unsuitable soil layers such as peat you can write that as expensive soil instead of the expensive soil expensive soils are those soils when you add water into the soil they usually swell and when you dry that water they shrink so that's why it's not expensive soil it's expensive soil so if you dry those soils if you dry them unconsolidated deposits and old soil layers peat is an organic Um, you know if the, the the soil is containing too much of the organic matter leaves and plants etc so you don't need to construct your buildings foundations on these types of soil prevent footing movement by distortion plant root this can also occur you know sometimes you need to provide the depth of the foundations so that you can avoid the unnecessary cracking and differential settlements due to the plants roots etc now the spacing requirement if you remember from the pressure bulbs um, there are pressure bulbs beneath the foundations and nearby the foundations so these can also prevent distress in the adjacent foundation therefore a certain spacing should be provided beneath the foundations economic and functional requirement are also very very important in designing the foundations now these are all the factors now our focus is for steps for the designing a foundations we will locate the site and position of the load we will physically inspect the site for any geological or any evidence we will establish the field exploration program and what are the field exploration program spt standard penetration test cone penetration test field vein test there we can also go for the pressure meter test dilutometer test these are the tests which can give us those shear strength parameters and other geotechnical engineering properties we can also go for the laboratory testing program this is the basic geotechnical um, engineering characterization soils characterization classifications consistency limits compaction behavior permeability behavior and then we can go for the shear strength parameters all these will be obtained and also the odometer test for settlement analysis will determine the soil design parameters shear strength parameters which are used in the bearing capacity equations which will be used in the chapter number 2 interesting thing is here simple or complex computer analysis may be involved depending upon the time and the cost of the project uh, very 
widely used geotechnical softwares are Plaxis and GeoStudio. So Plaxis is one software, it's a powerful one which is used in North America and all over the Middle East and Far East Asia as well. If you graduate from uh, UT Shower or even if you graduate from the Western University, then you will use this if you are hired as a junior geotechnical engineer in Canada or if you are hired in Pakistan, you are going to use this software for the embankment analysis, shallow foundations, deep foundations, slope stability, retaining wall issues. GeoStudio is a software which is used to find out the seepage analysis, for example, slope W, seep W, and even the stress analysis as well. So these are the very handy and interesting softwares which can be used to perform different kind of analysis. But this is a very powerful one and used for the foundation design. There are other L pile for the deep foundation, but I would recommend here this one. Now design the foundation using the soil parameters. And we will see that, you know, it's good for the shear failure criteria and for the settlement criteria as well. Now in the foundation selection process, I would rather not go on to the text there. I'll go in a flow chart here. So first of all, we obtain the site information, surface information and the subsurface information. Obtain the structure data, what type of structure it is, performance criteria, foundation loads are discussed here in the, the obtained structure data. Then we need to evaluate the foundation alternatives, for example, the shallow foundations or deep foundations. And we can also modify the shallow foundations or even I can add the fourth one, ground modification techniques for the deep foundation as well. Then we predict behavior. We see and check the settlement bearing capacity, lateral stability and environmental factors. Determine the feasibility if the settlement and the design, the shear failure criteria and the required performance criteria is met. Then we go for the cost estimation. If it's acceptable, it's okay. We will go here, but if it's not acceptable, then we will again go for another foundation type. And then we will do the same process again. Once it is acceptable, then the foundation type, design data, construction procedures, will be recommended then we go for the detailed plans and specification and the construction of that foundation now that is all about a house design a pile design a bridge design there are different types of uh, other structures which are foundation types are also uh, currently being under research especially in the Scandinavian countries when I was doing research in 2013 in South Korea. South Koreans were particularly interested in uh, constructing wind farms, offshore wind turbines because they wanted the clean and green energies there. So in that case, there are different videos which I have downloaded for you guys just to give you an idea that what's going on in the world in the foundation engineering. You can see the suction bucket foundations, just like, you know, the drum upturned buckets suction is applied. You can lower down the sound here. So these are, these won't be discussed in the course, but it's just going to give you an introduction that, you know, what kind of foundations can a geotechnical engineer design and also uh, what's going on in the world in the field of uh, geotechnical engineering. So this is a suction bucket. If it's alone, that is known as monoport, Norway, Sweden, sometimes they prefer on the single bucket foundation. And if you are using three, then that is known as tripod. And here you can see the pipes which suck the water from the inside. Let me see if I can. Yeah, these are kind of the mortars there. They are extracting the water from 
the inside of the buckets and then that bucket is going into the soil different kind of tilt meters are attached to the buckets to monitor the tilt or the penetration of this individual bucket into the offshore uh, soil now the project which i was working on with the, um, the it comprised of like seven different universities so one project was focusing on the motor the another one was focusing on the structural design the another for the our university was focusing on the basic geotechnical characterization advanced geotechnical characterization and the advanced uh, testing which was related to the cyclic direct simple shear test it's kind of an advanced uh, direct testing apparatus uh, it's kind of similar with the direct shear test, but it's the uh, it's measuring the cyclic properties of the soil, the dynamic properties of the soil, and how the you know the uh, cyclic load will affect the if, uh, the foundation. So that was our part of the project. So these are the pumps which will extract the water. You can see here. And the bucket is going down, it's penetrated into the soil, the seabed. Quick recovery of the pumps is also possible. You can just pull them up. The foundation is installed there in the offshore environment. So big barge is there. Now you can construct the stem, nacelle, and the blades and you can get the clean and green energy. Now, why they are going for the offshore environment? They are developed nations. They are annoyed with the noise which is created on the onshore env environment. Lots of uh, people go to the authorities that the noise is unbearable. So that's why we don't want wind farms here. So they will compensate a lot of money. And then they went for the option of the Oh, on off, oh, offshore environment and the wind is also good so the wind speed is good so that's why they are going for the onshore in chatham which is near the u.s border in canada onshore are the um, gravity based uh, platforms are also provided and the good news is that in pakistan in jambir and in Balochistan, um, we are also having onshore wind turbine foundation. It's very costly, but it can be very reliable in the longer period of time. So it's a bed is constructed first that how we can uh, uh, construct a gravity based onshore and how we can install the uh, wind turbine in the onshore environment. Uh, when I was working in Canada, one of my friends, uh, he was uh, investigating the soil. So you can clearly see it looks like the clay soil, uh, different moisture content is there, the layering is different. And he was investigating the, he installed a different kind of instruments uh, on the top of the gravity based foundation. That's how they construct the gravity based uh, foundations for the wind turbine. So you can clearly see the rebar work, compression and the positive and the negative reinforcement to counter the uh, loads. For example, the wind loads, it's kind of a cyclic load as well. Then even the earthquakes, now they are trying to pour some concrete. It's very heavy and huge. Let me see if you can see here. Then this is the reinforcement. Now the concrete will be poured here. You can see lots of concrete is required. Gravity based is known as the weight of the structure is huge. That's why it's known as gravity based foundations for wind turbines. So you can see here the foundation has been constructed here so they will just bring the stem of the wind turbine and they will attach it here so you can clearly see that's a huge structure now the stem will be stable now if the load is applied even from the wind as well so it can uh, cannot be you know tilted or overturned so that is another type of foundation and 
okay there's an, another interesting project uh, when i was uh, phd student so we usually work as a graduate research and teaching assistant when we work as a graduate research assistant we are paid uh, with the living expenses and we are also paid uh, you know the, the supervisor pay for the tuition fee as well so my supervisor told me to explain this video to the undergraduate student uh, students in the class uh, unfortunately we don't have too much time to spend time because on the structural aspects and even you know it's it's kind of a very very interesting mega structure and national geographic has made um, a video on it so it's a ryan and Chiron bridge which is located in greece and uh, the interesting part is that they wanted it to be finished in five years and they wanted to before the olympics uh, to start there and they were uh, having significant uh, seismic uh, hazards there so the liquefaction issues which we discussed in the geotech 2 now we will see that how they tackle this uh, huge structure the water is uh, deep there so how they are going to collect the samples how they are going to stabilize the soil so these are very interesting things which will be discussed in this video so you can watch this video because as a civil engineer student if you want to uh, understand that how the project is being uh, done and performed that would be very interesting video so you can see here let me see if we can have a voice here. And here is yeah, this one is a very interesting part. Okay, this one is an interesting part here as well. <laughs> 